Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over the NBA slate on DraftKings for Friday, December the 7th. Uh, we have a 10 game Friday slate. I'm going to go through each position, talk about some of my favorite plays at each price tier. Uh, the studs I like, the mid-tier plays I like, and value. I'll try and hit on value if I see any at each position. Um, before we do get started though guys, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like on the video. It does mean a lot. Um, if you are new to the channel, if this is your first time checking out a video on my channel, Thank you so much for clicking on the video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so that way you won't miss out on any of my new uploads. Um, but yeah, for point guard today, we have two guys over 10K. We got Russell Westbrook against the Bulls and Steph Curry against the Bucks. Um, so right now, looking at this slate the night before, I really don't have interest in either guy. Westbrook's at 11-4, and I think there are just other studs I'd rather play. I think I'd rather play Giannis for cheaper. Uh, AD's not in the best spot against Memphis, but I think I'd rather play AD. He's just given us such a high floor, high ceiling this year. Um, Brandon Ingram's going to be out for the Lakers, so I feel like we're going to get more ball handling for LeBron at 10-8. I definitely like him. Love Joel Embiid at just 10-1 against Detroit. So Westbrook, for me, is a guy I'm probably going to be avoiding today. Don't see myself going to much of him. Curry's now up to 10K, coming off a really nice game against the Cavs. I was pretty high on him in that game against the Cavs. He had 69 drafting points. Finally saw a big game from Curry. He could obviously have another big game here against the Bucks, but I think there are other guys I'd rather pay for. Uh, so for point guard, at least for me today, if you're going to this mid-tier, not to the studs, but to the 8K range, Mike Conley against the Pelicans stands out with his matchup. I don't love the price for Mike Conley, but that matchup is really good against the Pelicans. And then Kemba Walker, his price tag uh, against Denver, 8K, just feels like too cheap of a price for Kemba. I know he's been really bad lately. Uh, but 8K for Kimba, I'll still be playing him some today at that price. Uh, but I think point guard, we can go to the 5K range. Uh, this is not a play I'm thrilled about rostering, but I think just makes a lot of sense. Uh, Lonzo Ball at 5,700, I do like here against the Spurs. Without Brandon Ingram, I expect Lonzo to have the ball in his hands a lot. Uh, he played really well in that last game against the Spurs. They actually played on Wednesday. They're playing again on Friday, just this time it's going to be in San Antonio. Uh, but Lonzo play, played really well. Brandon Ingram left that game about two or three minutes in with the injury. Lonzo played 40 minutes, had 37 drafting points, had 14, 4, and 9. Uh, we know Lonzo has big upside, even though he hasn't shown it much this year. Uh, he's done well in this matchup. I expect him to do well today, especially since Brandon Ingram is not going to play. I do like Lonzo Ball a lot at 5,700. Uh, he didn't see much of a price increase with the Ingram injury. Just got priced up a few hundred dollars. Still feels a little bit underpriced. Feels like he has a little bit more upside, or the potential of him reaching his upsides a little bit higher now that Ingram is out for this game. And if Gordon Dragic plays today, if he's able to go and he's going to be fully healthy, I do like him a lot at 5,900 in the revenge game against the Suns. Pretty sure Dragic like hates the Suns. He loves when he plays against them, or he loves to play against them because uh, he just hates that team. So Dragic 5,900. If we can get a confirmation on his status on Friday, if he's able to go fully strength or fully healthy at full strength, I like him at 5,900. Uh, but now value-wise, Ish Smith is going to be out, so we could potentially see a few more minutes for Reggie Jackson at 5,300. Reggie Jackson, not usually a guy I play a lot, and I don't really like the matchup, but uh, he's 5,300. I feel safer projecting him for over 30 minutes today. I think I'd rather get up to Lonzo, but uh, Reggie Jackson is definitely in play if you want to go there. And then sub 5k, looking for cheap value plays. There isn't a ton that stands out to me, uh, we'll see how the Suns do on Thursday night. I'm recording this video before that game starts Thursday against the Trailblazers. Uh, we do have De'Anthony uh, De Melton, or whatever his name is, De'Anthony Melton, I think that's his name, down here at 4,200. We don't know if he's starting yet Thursday night. If he does start Thursday night, uh, by the time this video gets uploaded, most of y'all will probably be watching this on Friday when that game's over. Uh, but if we get De'Anthony Melton starting Thursday night, he does well. Potentially could go back to him today at 4,200. He still is cheap. Same with Okobo. Okobo is still cheap at 3800 uh, But the situation with the Suns, their value play is kind of going to be a wait and see for me. We'll see how they do Thursday night against the Trailblazers. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to shooting guard now. So I don't love paying to the top of this position. You do have DeRozan in a good spot against the Lakers, but at 8900 for, DeRo 8, for DeRozan on this slate, just feel like I'd rather go elsewhere. Uh, I know DeRozan's done really well in this matchup, but like I said, I think there's other guys I'd rather pay for. If you're going to the mid-range, there isn't a ton that I love here. Maybe like Jamal Murray at 7,100, but doesn't feel like a core play for me today. 
Maybe Josh Richardson at 6,700 if um, Gordon Dragic does not play. But again, not doesn't feel like a guy I'm going to have a heavy amount of uh, interest in or in a heavy amount of my lineups. So if we're talking about value at this position, it's kind of the same guys I've touched on. Like Reggie Jackson feels safer projecting him for more minutes since we don't have any Ish Smith today. Uh, let's pull up the Detroit backcourt. So Ish Smith's going to be out. We already know that. Reggie Bullock out as well. We could potentially see more minutes for Stanley Johnson. Uh, he's not shooting guard eligible, but he is 4K at small forward. We'll talk more about him there. Maybe Langston Galloway sees more minutes. Langston Galloway, not the best point-per-minute player, uh, but I imagine he's going to play more minutes since Bullock and Smith are both. I know Smith's out. Bullock, I believe, is out as well. Even though DraftKings has him listed as questionable, I believe that uh, Reggie Bullock not going to play for the Sixers or for the Pistons today. He didn't play Wednesday is what uh, it looks like it says, so I imagine he doesn't play today, so maybe Stanley Johnson, uh, but we'll talk about more about him at small forward. Uh, so I think that's probably it for shooting guard value plays, at least that really catch my eye. Maybe I'm missing something. Uh, Wayne Ellington's out. Maybe we could go to McGruder at 4,500, but uh, Dragic returns today. Don't have a lot of interest in McGruder. His usage goes down when Dragic is out, or when Dragic plays, excuse me. Uh, even with Wayne Ellington being out, probably not going to go there. Like I said, the Suns guys, we'll wait and see how they do. Uh, Melton, Bridges. Okobo, those guys. So let's move on to small forward now. Um, so at the top of this position, you have Giannis, LeBron, and KD. Uh, also have like Kawhi, PG. But looking at the three guys over 10K, Giannis, LeBron, KD, I think I would rank them how they are. Uh, I definitely like Giannis here against the Warriors. Uh, this is just a game where Giannis gets up. He tries to play well. The Warriors are going to be without Draymond, so their defense is not nearly as good. They have Curry back, so they're playing a lot faster now. Uh, this is definitely an appealing game. It should be competitive. It should be high scoring. Two teams that will play fast. Uh, I like Giannis a lot at 11,100. I feel like I'm going to be going maybe down to Joel Embiid in most of my lineups. I love Embiid for a thousand cheaper. Uh, but Giannis, 11 1, for sure in play. And like I said, with Brandon Ingram out, I think LeBron handles the ball a little bit more along with Lonzo. Uh, I do like LeBron at 10 8. I would rather play Giannis, but LeBron's definitely an option. KD, for me, not going to be a guy I have a ton of interest in. Just I'd rather play the other two guys at the top. Uh, I think small forward might be a position we can try and find some value. Don't love a ton of the mid-tier plays. Not a lot at the mid-tier really stands out to me. If we're going cheap at this position, I think you can go back to Josh Jackson at 5,500. We'll see how he does Thursday night. Hopefully he does well. Had a decent amount of him in my lineups Thursday night. Uh, he's 5,500, still cheap. I imagine Warren doesn't play. We know Booker's going to be out. Uh, so Josh Jackson, 5,500, still in play for me as a value option. The minutes should be there. Uh, but you have Magruder here, who you could play with Wayne Ellington out. I like Magruder a little bit more if we get confirmation on uh, Dragic's static, uh, status and whether he is out. But then I do want to mention the guys from Detroit. Stanley Johnson at 4K. I think he's been coming off the bench. I believe the Pistons have been starting uh, Jackson, uh, Reggie Jackson, Galloway, Maybe Stanley Johnson has been starting. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but uh, last few games he's been playing mid-20s in minutes. I imagine he sees more minutes since no Ish, no Reggie Bullock today. 4K, you could go there. Not the strongest value play, but is an option. He probably will be in my player pool. How much exposure I get to him is kind of a wait and see, but definitely a guy that I'll have in my player pool. But that's probably it for small forward value plays uh, besides Stanley Johnson. So let's move on to power forward now. I think this is a position we have a lot of good value. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But there's definitely studs worth paying up for. You can play Giannis and LeBron here. Uh, you can play AD at 11K, who I do like a lot, even though it's not the best matchup with Marc Gasol. Marc Gasol, a good defender. Uh, AD got priced down for this matchup. 11K, pretty much one of the cheapest prices we've seen on Anthony Davis in his while. And if we pull up his game log, uh, AD's just been one of the most consistent players all year giving you almost 60 drafting points on a nightly basis, 64, 53, 59, 54, 65, 58, 65, 80, 59, 59, just so consistent last 10 games. I imagine AD gets at least 50 drafting points. I feel like his upside might be a bit limited in this matchup, but still has that very high floor that you love. I feel, safer, or I feel better going to Giannis in a tournament because I feel like Giannis has more upside in his matchup, and just with that game environment, the, the pace of that game, I think I've would rather play Giannis, but uh, AD, his floor just can't be denied. His ceiling as well. He is worth paying up for, but I do like going a bit cheaper. I really like Blake Griffin today at 9,400. Uh, when we get to center, we'll talk about Joel Embiid. I like pairing Griffin and Embiid in a lot of lineups. 
Uh, this is a spot that Blake Griffin has done really well this year and a spot where Andre Drummond has really struggled. Uh, I believe Embiid came out in like an interview and said that he's got some real estate in Drummond's head that he's been owning Drummond, pretty much has. Drummond's really done poorly in this matchup. And Blake Griffin has really excelled. 74 DraftKings points and average through two games against the uh, Sixers, an average of, played an average of 40 minutes through those two games. He's got 44 points per game in, through those two games against the Sixers, average of 13 rebounds, 6 assists. I'm not expecting a 70-point game from Griffin. I think he has the potential to do that, especially if Drummond is struggling again. I feel like Drummond will struggle again, and Bede's just really done well against him, and Bede really defends Drummond well, which kind of leads to Blake Griffin excelling more in this matchup. And 9,400, he's still remotely cheap. Uh, now that the Sixers do have Jimmy Butler, they do have a good defender out there, a defender that will probably match up well with Blake Griffin, but uh, Blake Griffin a little bit stronger, a little bit taller, just more oversized when it comes to Jimmy Butler. Butler a bit undersized defending Griffin. I think he will defend Griffin, but I don't think Griffin's going to get shut out here. I think Drummond could struggle, which could lead to Blake Griffin uh, doing really well in this matchup, and I like him a lot at 9,400. Uh, if I can find the salary to maybe get up to AD, I'll try and do that in most of my lineups, but I feel safe, or I don't mind at all going down from AD or down from Giannis at this position to Blake Griffin. I feel like he does have a lot of upside, and is probably going to go pretty overlooked today. Uh, but now let's look for these value plays I want to mention. We'll start off, though, with one mid-tier play, uh, Kyle Kuzma, 6800 I don't love the price for Kuzma, but with Brandon Ingram out, Kuzma is in consideration for me, even at 6800 uh, but there's a lot of value at this position that I want to touch on. So we have news already that Hassan Whiteside's not going to play for the Heat, which is going to open up some value plays. We have Bam Adebayo, who's power forward and center eligible. He is 4,200. We also have Kelly Olynyk, who's power forward and center eligible, and he is 4K. And I think it does make sense to play both guys. They're just so cheap. I don't see how one of them, if not both of them, pay off this price tag and return a lot of value. Uh, so I love Bam at 4,200. Love Olenek as well. Uh, the fact that you can play both of these guys at power forward makes them very appealing on DraftKings. If they were both like only center eligible, I probably wouldn't be playing both of them. But since you can play one at power forward, one at center, one at forward spot, one in util, uh, you have a lot of flexibility. So love Adebayo and Olenek here. I would say that it's most likely uh, Adebayo gets the start and Olenek plays probably close to 27, 28 minutes off the bench. And we get about 26, 27 minutes as well from Adebayo. Adebayo is a very good point per minute producer. Great matchup against the Suns. He should be able to dominate in this matchup. The Suns have been so bad defensively this year, especially against the center position. Uh, so Bam's going to be popular today, but just really hard to avoid him at 4,200. Kelly Olenek, on the other hand, might not be as popular since he's so similarly priced to Bam. And I feel like a lot of people are just going to play Adebayo and not really think about Olenek. But I like going to both guys. Olenek's been playing... Decent minutes already. Uh, now you take Whiteside out, his minutes should just increase from here. He's played mid-20s in three straight games, 25, 29, 28 minutes. He's taking shots when he's on the court. He's grabbing rebounds. He's getting a few assists as well. He's put up 29, 32, and 28 DraftKings points in the last three games. And now that Whiteside's out, his usage should increase. His minutes should go up as well. Uh, I really like playing both guys. Not sure how many people are going to do that today, but I think it makes sense, especially with bo how cheap both of them are. Uh, allows you to fit in multiple studs. I think both of them could easily put up 30 DraftKings points and be great uh, values at their price tags. Uh, so those are the value plays I like at Power Forward. Also, you can play them at center. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to center now. So at the top of this position, you have Joel Embiid, 10-1 against Detroit. Uh, just love Embiid here against Drummond. He's done so well this year against Drummond. Uh, like I said at the beginning, or like I said earlier, Embiid came out and said in an interview that he's got real estate in Drummond's head that he just dominates, and he's done it so far this year. Through two games against the Pistons, he's averaged 65 DraftKings points. He's averaged 36 points and 14 rebounds through two games. If all things go as planned, I feel like Embiid puts up a big game against Drummond. I think Drummond's going to struggle, and Embiid's going to really do well defending him, and that's going to lead to Blake Griffin putting up another big game. Uh, so like I said, like pairing Blake Griffin and Embiid today is sort of a game stack of that game, getting the two studs in that game, both of them with monster upside, especially at this game is high scoring and it stays competitive. Uh, but now other centers, if you don't want to pay up for Embiid, you could go to Jokic or like Vooch, but these aren't going to be guys I have a ton of exposure to. Mark Gasol against the Pelicans you could go to, but Gasol really burned me in that last game against the Clippers, uh, so I will probably be avoiding him today. 
I think center for me, if I'm not paying up for like Embiid or Davis here, I'm probably going to be looking to the value plays with Bam, with Olenek you can play. In the mid-range, I guess you could go to like Tristan Thompson against the Kings. Really good matchup. Thompson's been dominating. But at 7,300, I don't expect him to be a guy I put a massive weight on today or have a ton of exposure to. In the mid-range, the 5K range, not a ton stands out to me here either. Uh, so I think center today is pretty straightforward. At least for me, I'm either going to be paying up for the studs, Embiid, uh, Jokic, uh, guys like that, Anthony Davis, or I'm going to be trying to go cheap with the value plays I really like, Bam and Kelly Olenek, I think are the value plays you want at this position. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think that's it for center, and I think that is it for the video. So hopefully you did enjoy this video. Hopefully it did help you. Um, if you enjoyed the video, just make sure you click that like button before you get out of here. I would appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe as well. If you have not already, and if you do have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at the DFS underscore GOAT, or you can leave any comments down below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, guys, good luck tonight on this 10-game slate. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.